Hello everybody, welcome, welcome back to my channel and this is uh, this is Tamur and this is my channel, the cloud security guy. Now, a week back I made a video about AI is, how AI is going to take away certain cyber security jobs, right? And the whole point of that video was to just to give you an idea that certain roles are going to get impacted and certain jobs are going to get impacted. And the whole point of video is not to like make you depressed about how your job is going to go away and like layoffs are going to happen. That's not the point, right? AI is going to be impacting every single job industry that is there. And cybersecurity is no different. And uh, I know cybersecurity, so that's the topic I talked about. But like I said, the whole point of that video was not to give you like uh, make you depressed or pessimistic, right? And the whole point of that video was to show you how cybersecurity is changing. So you need to keep yourself updated and have an action plan for how you're going to be dealing with the changes that are going to come in cybersecurity as a result of AI. Now, in this video, I want to talk about the good jobs, right? The good, like, sorry, the good news that AI is going to be creating new jobs also. New roles are going to get created. New jobs are going to get created because one big mistake, a huge mistake that people make when it comes to AI is they think AI is like perfect, right? It does not, it's infallible. It can't make mistakes, which is ridiculous. AI does not have human judgment and intuition. And AI needs like a high quality of data to give you good results. And th therefore it needs human beings to validate and train AI with like domain specific knowledge. And there are big concerns over the security and privacy of data, which goes into AI systems. So you need human beings for like fixing those things, right? AI is not going to replace everything. It's going to in fact create new jobs specifically focused around AI. And this was last year. I think from the World Economic Forum, and they talked about the new sort of jobs which are going to come out like prompt engineering and interface and content creation, like data trainers, ethics and governance specialists, and a few of these I'm going to talk about. But th that's the whole point, right? I did not want to just make you depressed about how jobs are going away. And this is this video is like a part two of the previous video. In that video, I talked about how AI is going to take away certain cybersecurity jobs. Now I want to talk about how AI is going to be creating new cybersecurity jobs, like new jobs are coming out and new roles are coming out. And the whole point of this is to give you an action plan. Think about these job roles and skills, right? If you're new to this channel, before we go ahead, just do like and subscribe to this channel so that you get notified when I release no videos. So without delaying too much, now what am I talking about when I said AI is going to create certain cybersecurity jobs? So let's talk about the first one, which is AI guardrails. Now, what am I talking about here? Uh, if you are like been in the industry as, as long as I have, you know, when web applications came about, there was this big uh, rush towards input validation. People were worried about SQL injection attacks, cross-site scripting attacks. Why? Because people could put in input and make the application crash or make the application give away all its data, right? The exact same concept, but in a different way is coming out with AI guardrails. Now you have all these generative AI applications coming out, right? People can't wait to put Copilot or chat GPT or whatever on top of their data and give it to access right to customers. So your, your generative AI application will have access to business data. The problem is how do you make sure that it's only talking about the stuff you want it to talk about, right? How do you know that people can't make it give away certain sensitive information, which is quite critical because these Gen AI applications are going to be having access to your business data, right? So this is where guardrails come in. So this is an example. Amazon just released recently uh, guardrails for their agents. And this is similar to what I'm talking about. So you can actually block topics from being discussed or not. You're not talking about blocking input. We're not talking about blocking semicolon or asterisk or those sort of things, illegal characters. No, you want to block your topics from being discussed and you want to manage those interactions. So this is where guardrails is coming and this skill is going to be very, very in demand as more and more critical Gen AI applications come about and more and more Gen AI applications get access to your data. Organizations want guardrails in place. So to block unauthorized topics from being discussed, for example, a banking assistant like giving away investment advice, right? Or when it's being discussed, you want to make sure that any PII is redacted, right? So you don't want it suddenly giving away your name or social number or phone or email address or even like credit card numbers, right? And I'm sure we're going to be seeing lots of attacks as more and more Gen AI applications come about. So you want to make sure that these skills are there and this is where uh, what do you call the ability to create guardrails the ability to be good in creating guardrails to put in these sort of things this is going to be a very much in demand this might be a new job like a new job role uh, like or this might be added to existing 
uh, what do you call job roles, then this skill might come in. But this is something if you're not working on, I would definitely recommend taking a look at it. Okay. The second one is AI agent security. Now, uh, since chat GPT came about and generative AI came about, how does it work? Usually it's people who are prompting the AI application, right? Back and forth. There's prompt. You ask it something, it tells you. You ask it something, it tells you. But now we are moving on to the next phase of AI, which is AI agents, which is autonomous AI. So instead of just giving you a response, you ask the AI application and it is going to actually do that work. It's going to book your vacation, like it says, or pay your bills or within the context of companies, you're going to you're going to have many, many AI agents doing the job like things like back office or simple redundant op automation, like things which you don't need like too many people to do, which are very simple and can be automated. You're going to have AI agents taking over. And so your whole inside your company, you're going to be having lots of these digital agents. So instead of if you have worked in cybersecurity, you know the concepts of uh, service accounts, right? A accounts that have access. Now you will have agents that are going to have access to your applications and things. And this is where the problem comes in, right? What if somebody is able to compromise them? This is where agent security comes in. You, the, so the ability to secure these agents, to monitor them, just like you have endpoint security engineers. Now you can have AI agent engineers because it's going to be very, very dangerous, the security of these AI agents, the amount of access that they have. And that leads on to the next job role, which is AI red teaming. Now, AI penetration testing and all that I've talked about before. Now I'm talking about AI red teaming, which is you're going to need people who have the ability to simulate all these different types of scenarios, right? How a hacker could potentially compromise your AI application, get inside your company. We're not just talking about scanning AI systems or agents, how to stop them from taking over your AI agents, how to make them stop from like going over your uh, generative AI application. This skill is going to be massive. And like simple example is uh, when you train your AI on legitimate samples, like a facial recognition, how do you solve you, the, the security team is going to be sending it adversarial samples, which is like uh, unauthorized data, right? And to see, just to see how AI is going to be behaving. And once you have that, you're going to need somebody who is going to be doing red teaming. So actually attacking these models, things like inference, model evasion, model poisoning, data poisoning, these are all AI specific attacks, right? So you're going to have a red team and a blue team doing all these sort of attacks against the models. And if you don't have these skills, take a look at that because it's quite critical. The ability to know how these models work and how red teaming is going to work. We have the new AI, UA, U, EU AI Act coming out, right? And in that, it actually says that if you have a high risk uh, general purpose AI model, you need to make red teaming, carry out red teaming. So a lot of companies are going to be jumping on this bandwagon, making a lot of money. But this skill is very much in demand. AI red teaming, focus on how to like carry out adversarial testing, AI red teaming. And you're going to be your job is this is like a, this job is going to be massively in demand, especially as the EU AI Act comes out and more and more companies globally, they want to have this capability. Moving on to the next one, which is AI compliance and AI. And we're not talking just about security compliance. All sorts of AI laws are coming out, right? We have the EU AI Act coming out, ISO 42001 coming out, uh, ISO, uh, like I even forgot the number, what is that? But basically, lots of AI roles and AI regulations laws are coming out and they're going to mandate that AI comply with certain requirements, right? So that's why the ability to know these standards, if you're not that technical about AI. So a lot of people think that to know AI, you need to know machine learning or statistics and all that. I don't know those things, honestly. I would consider myself to be knowledgeable about AI, but all these standards are coming out, right? We have the upcoming standard coming out 27090, which is focused on security threats and failures in AI systems, which is which is under development. Now, this is going to be massive. So many companies are going to want to comply with this, right? We have the 42001, which has already come out, which is about an AI management system. So creating like a model within your company about how AI is managed, how AI is properly trained. And basically, it's make sure that AI is working properly within your company, right? The whole governance framework is present. And most importantly, we have the EU AI Act has come out, which is called the first AI law. And this is going to have a global impact, even though it's focused on the EU, similar to the, like regulations like the GDPR. The What happens is most, the, most of the world looks towards the EU when it comes to act, and then they model their own laws based on the EU laws. This happened with GDPR. So even countries that were not applicable, 
the GDPR was not applicable to, they modeled their laws based on the EU laws. So the EU AI Act is going to have a massive, massive impact. I've just released a course on this. I'm going to put a free coupon in the comment section if you want to take a look at that just recently. So just to like, so you get a running start and you understand about these things. Okay, what is AI risk management? Now, uh, risk management has always been huge, right? But now with all these laws coming out, companies are going to want people who have the skills to actually identify risks within their AI applications, right? How do you do that? It, it, you're simple. You can't just make an Excel sheet and think that, yeah, okay, I've discovered AI risks. No, they have certain standards which have come out, certain rules which have come out. You need to know how to actually assess these risks, right? The simplest example is the NIST AI risk management framework. Do you know how that works? Like how to uh, identify risks, how to make sure those, are, those get highlighted, what are the ways in which you can highlight AI risk? This skill is going to be massive. And again, if you're not that technical, but you're interested in AI, this is something you can actually start studying. So this is a new standard, completely free. It's come out from NIST. You can take a look at this and get an understanding for how to manage AI risk, how to create like a risk management framework, which is focusing on AI. Again, a very, very niche field, which is going to be becoming more and more popular. And I think the last one is the head of AI security. Now, this is the last tool I wanted to talk about, which is now you have so many things coming out, right? I've showed you so many job roles and so many new job functions which are coming out. You need somebody who's going to have a strategy or a roadmap for how to fix these sort of things, right? How do you make sure all these things work together? So this is where a head of AI security is going to come in. This will be a strategic role, similar to like the CISO, but focusing on all these AI security initiatives, somebody who knows the roadmap, who can guide all these different things from properly happening. This is going to be a massive, like a very strategic and like, you know, an in-demand role because it's what, doing what it's focusing on the strategy. Like I said, you need somebody who has the ability to create roadmaps, who can guide the AI wet team guy, the AI compliance guy, the AI risk management guy. So like I said, this is going to be a strategic role, which is going to come out. So that's pretty much it, guys. These were the roles which I wanted to talk about. Like I said, I always try to update these videos every 12 months because of the pace at which AI is evolving. But I hope now you have a better idea of the new sort of roles which AI is going to be creating within cybersecurity. And now you're more optimistic, so you don't feel so depressed now, right? If you like this video, please do like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.